All right, hey, Andrew. Uh, so thanks for sending these. Um, I read through your notes. Uh, it looks like you've worked with some great instructors. Um, so today I want to look at, I think if we attack this um, with the body first, it'll set you up to do what you're trying to do in your hands and arms in terms of getting the club uh, in a better spot coming down uh, and all the stuff you're working on. So I want to start by um, sort of drawing a line here. And I read you talked about your right hip um, in your golf swing. And so I think we can, we can set your whole right side up um, in a better way um, to create more leverage and to have some better things happen for you. So as you take the club back, club moves back nicely. You know, good positions. But notice your right glute, right hip. See how it got closer to the ball? So that yellow line, um, you're now forward of it than you were at the top of the backswing. Now watch, this guy on the right is Mac O'Grady. So everyone in golf instruction is doing some form of something they've learned from Mac. So you can kind of see the traces of Mac in all golf instruction. Um, so watch Mac. So as he moves up to the top of the backswing, you can see how he pivoted his right hip straight back, his right rib. Um, this all moved kind of up and back. And you can notice how his ribs, pelvis, shoulders, all kind of match as he pivoted his body correctly. Um, where I see your, you know, hips are a lot flatter here, and then the ribs and shoulders are a lot flatter um, than Max. So that's just how he winds up his body and how he creates leverage to the top of the backswing. So if we can get you into your right leg, into your right hip properly, it's going to set you up uh, a little more angled the way Mac is to attack the ball a little bit more efficiently because he's creating his leverage uh, just better to the top of the backswing. So what happens is your pelvis is um, very under you here and it's moved forward um, with a really shallow sort of shoulder plane. So that's going to cause when you come down you know, you're a lot closer to the ball and the shaft plane is much higher than it was at setup. Um, so I'll give you another visual here of just how we're sort of winding up into the backswing. Let me just sift through here real quick. So here's Mac again. I want you to notice his upper center, lower center, very centered here, pelvis level. And then as he winds up, this right hip pushes back and loads back into that right glute. So you can see how much higher that right hip has gotten. It's gone pretty much straight back and replaced where his tailbone just was. Um, so what he's able to do here, and I'll show you more in the down the line picture, is because he's loaded high into this right hip, the right side of his body is ready to attack more in this direction. His hands, his hand path has a more direct straight line to the ball because of how he created leverage 
uh, to the top of the backswing. So you'll see here that this is where his centers were at setup. He's still centered, but he pivoted straight back into this right hip. But then notice, as he attacks the ball, everything's set up more in this direction. Because he's going to go down after this thing a little bit, more than you would. Because your pelvis is sort of extending a little bit early and closer to the ball, it's harder for you to stay back in your glutes as you attack the golf ball to flatten the shaft plane at impact. So what you'll see here is he's loaded into this right hip. Now he's set up to attack it, to compress it, to go down after it, to get some shaft lean. And you'll see that where he levels out again, so now his pelvis is level here, and his tailbone and spine are here. But notice where his tailbone and spine and pelvis leveled out at. So he's level at the bottom of the arc. So notice uh, the first line I drew on where he was at setup, that T right there, that was on his right hip, is now at the low point of the arc, so the bottom of the arc. And so I'm going to show you how to get into this spot, how to get to where you can attack the ball, um, level out better, and then your arms will fire and do what you're trying to do in terms of your release a lot simpler with the right body motion. So I'll pull you in uh, face on. Okay, so now just one sec. Now I know you're hitting a hybrid here, but you'll get the idea. So max centers. Watch this. So because he's pivoting, back in this direction, the ribs are winding up in this direction, he stays centered. Now watch the height of his left shoulder as he moves in transition. Notice the shoulder height. There's a because he's wound up into the right hip, he's set up to attack it better in this direction for a split second. That gets his centers level at the bottom of the arc. Okay, so this sternum and belt buckle now leveled out where the club's going to impact the turf. So obviously this would be different with a driver than it would be for an iron. Where for you, um, because you're not quite into this right hip properly and not quite loaded up in the right side of the body the way you can, um, it's going to cause your pelvis to kind of kick out in front of you and your left side to kick back. So you can see that when you get to here, your pelvis is already kind of up and out of the shot and then your sternum is very uh, sort of tipped back in this direction which bends your right side too much and gets your shoulders tipped up in this direction too early in the golf swing. Um, so I'll show you how we can get this movement better. It's going to be um, winding up the body 
better and then leveling out the body um, more, more efficiently. So what I see here is, you know, this height of your shoulder here, put a dot there. it starts raising in transition. So if the left side is raising, what that really means is the right side is too bent underneath here, the right side of your body. So this shoulder is kicking up a lot earlier than Max was. Now you'll see more of that with a you know a driver and a hybrid uh, than you will with a uh, you know a wedge. But if we set up your leverage better in your right hip here, then you'll attack the ball better for a split second right here instead of kind of coming up and out of it a little bit, which causes the right sides underneath and then the right wrist and hand throw a little bit on you and then it causes your body to chase up after it late and so the wrists aren't quite where they could be um, so in the second part I'll get on camera and I'll talk you know about how to do this what to feel what drills to do but I just wanted to give you a visual of if we wind the body up the back hip up the back rib up better, then watch this left shoulder. It can go down, 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 then level out. So that from this position, his sternum stacked on top of his belt buckle. Then from here, the club's going to come into impact, bang, and then everything's going to rotate together from here. You can see how Max sternum and pelvis are both sort of pointing in the same direction. They're both together here. And then when he rotates, everything's rotating together. And he's also squeezing his glutes and thrusting up. Where your um, you know, lower body's well out in front of its upper body. And so things aren't quite synced up the way we'll get them. So um, I just wanted to give you a couple visuals. I'll, I'll simplify this. I'll summarize this in part two. Uh, but I wanted you to see kind of where we're going. Because um, if you get back into your right hip better at the top of the backswing, it's going to allow you to tack the ball with more efficiency. So you won't be sort of on your toes through impact you'll actually be back in your left heel through impact um, so that you can create more compression, you can shallow the club better through impact, uh, and you can do a whole lot of more efficient things with the golf club. So I appreciate you listening to this part one, and then uh, I look forward to part two.